Hi, my name is Kelsey with Nyana Yoga, and today I have my friend Karina here joining me to demonstrate uh, some poses that will help to release your fear getting into certain poses called inversions. Inversions are whenever your hips are higher than your heart. Um, it's uh, poses like Salamba Shirshasana, which is a headstand. We're going to be doing that today. That's considered the king of all asanas. We'll also be getting into Sarvangasana, which is a shoulder stand, and that's considered the queen of all asanas. And we also have Halasana, which is plow pose. Um, these inversions are great for calming the mind. They're good for reducing stress, for introspection. Um, it also brings more oxygen to the brain, and it helps to open what is known as the third eye or Ajna chakra. So that's why we do these poses. If you can't watch this video now, if you don't have the time, then make sure you save it and we'll see you next time. To begin, you may wish to have a few items with you. First, you'll definitely want a mat and that will prevent you from slipping out when you're finally making it into your inversions. You also want to have two thin towels or blankets. I like to have two of them just because you can overlap the top one slightly to create a gradual slope. You might also wish to have a chair. You can also use a couch, um, but if you're using a chair, make sure that when you finally do go into the pose using the chair that it's on a mat so that way it's not slipping out as you rest your feet on it. Um, and then you'll want a strap for your elbows. I'll explain that later. And also a partner. <laughs> I've got Karina here with me today, and she's gonna be demonstrating these poses as we move into them. So I'll show what the pose looks like, and then I'll show how you can modify it and get into it with our props. Let's begin with a warm up. Doing a warm up is really important for inversions because we have so many muscles and tendons on the backs of our neck that we just wanna make sure that that's um, warmed up before we get into the pose or you could feel uh, sore for the next couple of weeks and we don't want that. So we're going to inhale, set up nice and tall, root into your sit bones, reach the crown of the head up toward the ceiling, exhale as you bring your chin down to the chest, bring your head all the way over to that left shoulder, exhale as you wind it back over to the other side. We're going to keep moving from side side. One more time to the other side. And then again to the last side. Bring it back to center. We're going to roll the shoulders back. And then roll the shoulder, shoulders forward. Go ahead and extend your right arm out to the side. I'm mirroring you, so it'll be the opposite. And then go ahead and inhale. You're going to take that left hand over to the top of your right ear. Gently bring the head down to your shoulder. Now, if this is too intense of a stretch, you can always rest that right hand on your thigh, or you can start to extend it out. Deep inhale. And exhale. Inhale back to center and exhale to the other side. One more breath. And then come back to center. We're going to cross our ankles, roll up onto your knees, and we'll come into cat cow. Once we're on our hands and knees, you're gonna take a look to see where your hands are placed. Make sure that they're right underneath your shoulders. Then drop down to your elbows in place of your hands. Once you've dropped back down to your knees, you're gonna create a basket with your hands and that's where the crown of your head is going to go on the mat. The crown of your head is going to be that flat spot on the top of your head and that's where you're going to balance. If you find that your elbows are slipping out, that's when it's nice to grab your strap and you loop that around, tightening as you need to, to make sure that your elbows are right underneath the shoulders. That'll prevent your, uh, your arms from going anywhere. So once we're in this position, and do you wanna use the strap or are you okay, Karina? Okay, great. So once you're in position, I'll show it with the strap. Go ahead and place your head down on the mat and you're going to keep the interlaced hands around your head. You can keep the thumbs up. That'll help you to balance too. 
So now rise up onto the toes, walk the toes in towards your head. We're gonna do Ekapada Shurshasana, that means one foot at a time is gonna come up. So it's almost like you're in a standing splits, first the left leg, and maybe see if you can lift the right toes off just a second, you know? And then come all the way back down, place the left foot in the center, lift the right leg up. If it feels good, you can start to maybe pop that left toes up, and bring that leg back down. Maybe this is where you stay. Otherwise, you can start to kick up using one leg. And I'm gonna demonstrate this with Karina to show how you can do this with a partner. So Karina, if we place our elbows right where our hands are on the mat, let's measure the distance between our elbows, create that basket with your hands, and then place your head in the center of those palms where it feels comfortable for your head to rest on the mat. Now I'm going to come behind Karina I'm going to place my knee in the center of her back so that way she knows that I'm here. She's gonna rise up onto her toes and start walking the toes in until she feels that she's vertical. Maybe uh, walk the toes up a little bit more. Yeah, good. So she's, gonna give, she's going to give me one leg and I'm just gonna hold that leg for her until she's ready to bring up the other leg. And now she's in Salamba Shurshasana or headstand. If you don't have a partner, you can do the same thing against a wall. All right, Karina, that's great. Thank you so much for demonstrating. If you wanna go ahead and sit up, I'm going to explain something else here. And that is, if you are in the center of the room and you've decided to practice this on your own, maybe you've already been doing this for a while in yoga studios where you've had a partner, you've had some support, or you've been doing it against the wall and you'd like to try it in the center of the room, if you start to fall backwards, the safest way to fall is to tuck your chin and roll. You create um, a curve of your spine and it's almost like a roly-poly. You just go with that gravity. Um, so it looks, I can show you what that looks like just so you're not afraid of tucking and rolling. So you're gonna go onto your knees, place your elbows underneath the shoulders, measure the width. Go ahead and create that basket with your hands. Rise up onto the toes. And then another way of getting into this, besides uh, doing Ekapada Shurshasana, which is this, is to tuck the knees. And this builds core strength. Keep them at a 90 degree angle to come all the way up. And say, I start to fall backwards. I'm gonna tuck my chin and then roll. <laughs> I wanted to also explain what this looks like in the center of the room once you've gotten comfortable with doing your knee tuck and then coming up into headstand. So the next step, if you've done your Ekapada Shurshasana, that's one leg at a time, and you've maybe hopped up for a while, and then you've tried that knee tuck, the next step is to really engage the core, keep the legs straight, and then lift them all the way up. So I'll show what that looks like. First, you're on your hands and knees, drop down to those elbows, right underneath the shoulders, measure the distance, use that strap, to hold your elbows in place if you need it. Place your head in the center, come up onto the toes, walk the toes in, and then keep the legs straight, engage the core, and then take them slowly up. And once you're here, you can start to play around with it. You can come into almost Ekapada Shurshasana. First with one leg, then the other one. So you can get stronger in this position. When you're ready to come down, you come down with control. Rest in Balasana or Child's Pose for a moment. And Karina, feel free to do this with me. This is a great way of coming out of the pose. <laughs> so just go ahead and rest. We're just gonna rest in Child's Pose. And then you can rock from side to side. come up and come into cat and cow. So we have, um, we're on our hands and knees, we're inhaling, looking at the ceiling, exhaling as we round the spine. Inhale, look up. And exhale, round the spine. One more, inhale, look up. And exhale, round the spine. Go ahead and sit back on the heels and then tuck your toes under. So then we're in Thunderbolt pose, and from here you can widen the knees. You take your hands out to the sides, 
And this is something I learned in India. We don't see it in a lot of Western videos because it makes you look really silly, but it feels really good. So you're going to be looking at the third eye chakra, so the Ajna chakra, which is in between your eyebrows. It does make you go cross-eyed and that's okay. Then we inhale, and as we exhale, we stick out the tongue as far as it'll go, we bring the hands together. This is the lion's pose. So go ahead and widen those fingers as much as you can. You're gonna go cross-eyed, inhale, and stick your tongue out. And try it again, one more, inhale. <laughs> I was like, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> Let's do it again, ready? <laughs> inhale, and then exhale. <laughs> Inhale, exhale, and again, inhale, exhale, good. And you'll see it, it releases all the tension in your shoulders, your neck, and when you stick that tongue out, it feels even better. Make it playful, make it fun. Okay, the next step is for us to go into a shoulder stand. For uh, Sarvangasana or our shoulder stand, we're going to need those two uh, thin towels or the blankets if you have them. I like to overlap them and then have it so that the top one is slightly behind the bottom one. This is good when you're starting out or sometimes if you just have a sore neck and you want a little bit more support. I'm going to place this behind Karina's neck and show her how to get into the shoulder stand using the chair. Before you get started with the chair, however, you want to make sure that that chair is on the mat so it's not slipping out as you get into this pose. So I'm gonna place this chair on Karina's mat. And then we'll take these towels and we'll place it. And actually, Karina, if you face the chair for a moment, we can measure how far away from the chair she needs to be. So you wanna be in Dundasana or staff pose. Bring your feet even closer to the chair. And this is a good way to figure out where you need to be sitting. And it's exactly where her hips are right now. So you'll just turn around and keep your hips right where they are. And then as you start to come down, place these towels right underneath your neck or I'll move them for you. And then she's gonna start to come up as if she were to go into her uh, shoulder stand. She's keeping her elbows in. She's walking the hands towards her head. As her partner, I can come behind her and hold her up with my knee. And then she can start to drop either one leg at a time or both legs to that chair. You can do this against the back of a couch too. You can also use a wall. And in that case, you do the same thing. Measure how far apart from the wall you need to be using Dandasana. Sit there and then that's where you're gonna come back down. You'll just have one leg on the wall, then the other. If her elbows were to pop out, then that's when I would use the strap. So Karina, do you wanna come all the way back down? So you're gonna roll one vertebrae at a time, slowly come down. And then I'll show what that looks like with the strap. So if you start to take your um, legs up, so you're gonna come back into uh, Halasana. So this is plow pose. This is the starting pose to get into that shoulder stand. And I can start to loop this around. And you can do it on your own, it's just a little bit trickier. I might need to widen it. And then you want it to be, <laughs> it's okay. This makes it fun. Okay, so now go ahead and place your hands on your back. And then support your back, and I can help with that. And now see if you can take one leg up. And then the other. Good, so she's in her shoulder stand. Next thing she needs to work on is getting her hips to be squarely over her shoulders. She's lifting the toes up toward the ceiling. Her legs are gonna come back towards my hand. So you can keep your legs straight. Keep your legs straight, knees straight, and then bring them back. There you go. Yes, that's good. So this is how you get into Halasana, plow pose, and then Sarvangasana, or our shoulder stand. And then to come out of it, we're going to tuck the knees in. You can roll down one vertebrae at a time. But before you do that, let me take that strap off of you. <laughs> okay, and then roll down one vertebrae at a time. There you go. And I'll show what that looks like once you become comfortable doing it in the center of the room. 
without your chair or couch. Yeah, sure, I'll use the towel, thank you. Okay. So if I decide to use these towels, I'm gonna to place them right under where my neck is. And then when I roll, I can roll my feet up and then back, so that way they're touching the ground. And halasana for me, for a lot of people, is easier to get into than sarvangasana, the shoulder stand. So you can start with this. Once you feel comfortable with halasana, you can play around with halasana. You can move your feet all the way over to the one side and then all the way over to the other side. You can even come into that ear pressing pose. So it looks like this. And that's a great one for introspection. It quiets the mind. Then I can start to take one leg up. If that feels good, maybe try the other leg. And if this feels good, then you can go ahead and bring both feet up toward the ceiling. And then to come down, same thing, you start to bring the legs back over the head and roll down one vertebrae at a time as you untuck the shoulders. And you can rest on the mat. After you've finished with your halasana and your sarvangasana, a really great counter pose for this is bridge pose. You can come into bridge pose straight from sarvangasana, but that is a little bit more advanced. So what I like to do instead is to lay all the way down on the mat. You're gonna keep your feet about hip width apart, interlace the hands underneath the hips, and come up into your bridge pose. So you're tucking the shoulders underneath and then lifting those hips up. Keep lifting as they start to sink down towards the mat. One more breath. And exhale, we'll come all the way down. And this is where you can rest in Shavasana. So you can keep the feet slightly wider than the hips, allow the feet to roll out to the sides. Palms will be facing the ceiling. Remember that Ujjayi breath at first. Calming breath. And then let it go so that you're breathing naturally. Release the tension in your feet, your calves. Soften the knees, soften the thighs. Allow the hips to become heavy. Soften your belly. Feel the nat natural rise and fall of your chest, moving with the natural rhythm of your breath. Soften the throat. Loosen the jaw. Release any facial tension, especially around the corners of the mouth, the nose, the eyes. Allow that space between your eyebrows to widen and soften. If you have mental chatter, then each time you exhale, you can let it go. Otherwise, you can start to internalize the mantra OM, which is associated with the Ajna Chakra. You can also start to visualize the color purple washing over you each time you inhale. And then eventually with each exhale, let everything go until you're just focusing on the sensations in your body. This is a great stopping point. So you can go ahead and pause the video here and relax in Shavasana for as long as you like. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining. Welcome to Yoga Plus. Courses available from pupil to yogi. Sort by yoga, fitness, and instructors. Create your own routines. Access the Pose Library. Yoga Plus by Psyche Truth. Available on Google Play and the App Store. Join us for 14 and 30 day programs, hour long classes, and much more on our yoga app, Yoga Plus by Psyche Truth. It's free to download and features a variety of wellness content, including yoga, 
fitness, Pilates, guided meditations, and interviews with dozens of wellness experts.